All right, there's something that I find confuses a lot of beginners when they're first starting to work with the DOM and you're starting to script. There's a couple of different properties that sound very similar, and that's children and child nodes. But it can be a little bit confusing about what that actually means, and sometimes you can get unexpected results. So we're going to look at this web page right here. I've got my font. It's a little bit smaller. I'm going to blow it up in a minute here, but I just wanted to show the entire body of my web page. Inside of here, I'm looking at document.body, so that's my body element here, and I'm looking at children, and I'm looking at child nodes, and I want to find out what the length of each of those is. So just take a moment, pause the video if you have to at this point, and look at all the different things that we have inside the body here, and see if you can figure out what the length of children is and the length of nodes is. Semantically, the difference is children are element nodes, child nodes are any kind of node. So if you think about the DOM, it, that's the document object model. It is the way the browser views your web page. Every single piece of information that you put inside of here is going to be some kind of node. We have element nodes like the body. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit now. So we've got the body, we have comments, we've got another element here, we've got h1 and h2, those are element nodes. Inside of those, this is a text node. This is a comment node. The carriage return and tab that we have right here after the body before the comment, that is also a text node. So we've got all these different kinds of nodes, and if we look at these, we're going to get two very different numbers for children and child nodes. Children is just the elements. Child nodes is everything, every kind of node. So 4 and 15, huge difference between them. So if you're expecting to be able to loop through them and do something with them, you can get some really different numbers from even something as small as this. I've got very little content here, but it is a big difference in the numbers. And that is because with elements, what do we have? So the children, that is the elements. I've got header, I've got main, I've got script. Those are the only three children. We're not going inside them to see what's there. We're just saying children, not the grandchildren, the great grandchildren. How many children are inside of here? So I'm counting three. This is coming back with four. And the reason for that is VS Code and the way I'm testing this page. I'm using live server the extension. So it's got a server that's running a little node server that's serving up the page. It's also injecting some script. So it has actually added another script tag and some comments and text inside of here. If we go to the elements, I think it's going to show up in here. Yeah. So here's the script tag that I had. Here's my comment. And this comment and this script tag were added by VS Code, by the live server plugin. And that's why we're getting this 4. For child nodes, same thing's going to happen here. But 15 still looks like a lot for this. After the body, the carriage turn and tab, that's 1. So 1, the comment is 2, 3 for the space, 4 for the header, 5 for the space before main, 6 for main, 7 is the space, 8 for this, 9, 10, 11 is the space after this, and then we're looking at the stuff that got added here. So 11, 12 for the comment, 13 for the space, 14 for the script, and 15 for the carriage return that came after the script tag that was pasted in there. So we have actually 15 child nodes inside of our document. If you ever want to loop through them and look at them, Child nodes is easy. Child nodes has an iterator built into it, so you can use the for each loop. We can say nodes.forEach. We'll do our function here, we'll do a little arrow function, and say I want to look at each node. I'm going to call this function here once for each node, and we can say console.log node to write out what the node is. Here we go. So the 15. There's that carriage return and tab, the comment, the carriage return, the element, the carriage return, the element, the carriage return, the element, the carriage return, 
the comment, the carriage return, the new comment, carriage return, the script, and there's the last one right there. So there's our 15 that we're getting back. We want to take a look at the children. Well, children is a different type of object. It doesn't have a for each method. There is no iterator, and that's because it's a live element. It's constantly being updated. If you change the DOM, the children is going to change as well. The length is going to change. So because of that, we can't do the for each. But what we can do, instead of doing this, children for each, because that's going to fail. I can come in here and say, okay, yeah, I'm going to look at each child. Console log each one of those. This is going to give me an error. There we go. For each is not a function. We can't do that with children. But what we can do is something that used to be used back when for each was first added before you could do like document query selector all and for each. Originally you couldn't do it on nodes. But what we can do is we can say I have an empty array that I'm going to call for each on. So here's an empty array which does have a for each method and I can say I want to call that method and when you do that the very first parameter that you pass in you can see here is the this argument. What is the thing that you want to loop through? What's the context? Well that's my children up here this children variable that's what I'm going to loop through and then for each one of those I'm going to call this function. There we go. Header, main, script, script. Those are my four children. All right, so I hope that clears up the difference between children and child nodes. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.